Hello and welcome back to the Chat with Segi series. My name is CY, I'm your moderator. And together with me, I have Miss Priscilla Malar, our lecturer from Faculty of Education, Languages and Psychology. Such a long name, your faculty. <laughs> <laughs> but we're here to talk about psychology. The topic uh, of our discussion today is psychologist of the future. What school leavers must know before they enroll into a psychology program. So if you are a school leaver, you know, uh, thinking about which university or which college to go to, uh, and if you want to pursue psychology, you've come to the right place. Uh, so stay tuned. Um, Miss Priscilla, welcome to the talk show slash webinar. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Most welcome. Could you introduce yourself? Okay, so my name is Priscilla and I'm the program leader and also the lecturer for psychology department here. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm very thrilled to be here because I can share to our audience about why you should be choosing psychology and why SEGI. Yeah, that's very important. Yeah. So the, the, road made, the, road, the road map of becoming a psychologist uh, can be quite confusing yes. for, for school leavers. You yeah. know, they, they think that, oh yeah, I want to become a clinical psychologist. I want to become a psychologist. I want to be a criminal psychologist. But I don't know how to go about, right? Miss Priscilla, could you share with us, you know, what is the road map to become a psychologist and what are the different types of psychologists they are? Okay, so we start with uh, your high school education. Upon completing high school education, we can move forward to entering college. Mm. Whether it's a foundation or a diploma, that is a stepping stone to the bachelor's program. And when you're done with bachelor's program, we highly encourage you to do master's and pursue up to PhD because mm. the qualification and the experience and your expertise only gets better and better mm. when you add on to more and more education and academic excellence mm -hmm. to your portfolio, so which is why we, we totally encourage the academic excellence to grow here. Mm -hmm. So that you can market yourself. One, it's for marketing. Secondly, you will be ahead of everybody else in the industry. Mm -hmm. And you can also get jobs easily. And uh, <coughs> being a pioneer in Malaysia is still something that we all look out for because we have psychology program that is growing. But, well, it's not that competitive yet at the top level, mm -hmm. right? So there's still a lot of room for, room for success here for students who want to excel in psychology. Mm -hmm. It's a growing industry yes, it and is. opportunities are everywhere. And I, I like what Miss Priscilla said about, you know, credentials. Mm -hmm. the, the psychology industry or the psychology scene is a scene where credential really matters yes. because it's a professional scene. So the, the higher you the higher qualification you have, naturally more opportunities will open for you. So let's talk about in choosing a psychology program, be it a diploma okay. or a degree. This is a question that I get asked a lot when I meet students. What should students look out for when they choose a psychology program? What should they consider? Okay. That's a very interesting question because you see a lot of universities and colleges, they're opening up programs and uh, psychology is the talk of the town right now. Exactly. Yes. Everyone is starting to offer yes, psychology somehow. Exactly. But one critical question that I would ask is, are the universities and the academicians ready to offer mm. a psychology program with lecturer expertise and also research academic excellence. Mm. Do they have that as a backup and to promote that to the students? Because we all can offer programs, it's easy, right? Mm. But how are we going to market it to the students and give the quality that they totally deserve, right? In Segi University, we have lecturer experiences that are huge. 10 years, 15 years, we have a huge department under Faculty of Education. Psychology comes under the Faculty of Education. The Faculty of Education itself is a department that is driven by academic and also research excellence, mm. right? So there's a lot of research opportunity, there's a lot of academic growth, there's a lot of um, field uh, observations, experiences that we give to the students. So we take it very seriously, like not just a small program that we start, mm -hmm. like a pilot study. Yeah. And then we just see, well, let's see how it's going to go. No, we're very serious about yeah. growing and, psychology. Yeah. And I think the, the, the ugly truth is that everybody sees uh, psychology, especially in Malaysia, as a growing field. And naturally, for a lot of university and colleges, they see the money in it. Correct. And that is where they started <laughs> offering suddenly, you know, there's a new diploma yes, in psychology yes. program, there's a new degree in psychology yes. program mushrooming out exactly. uh, in the industry. But the question here is, 
they see the, the opportunity. But the question here is, are they ready to offer it or not? Yes. Yeah. And I think as a student, one big consideration factor that you must consider is how long has this university or college been in industry? Yes. Are they ready? Do they have the, the academics to support? Yes. Do they have, you know, the teaching facilities to support your, your, your learning? That's very important. Yes. Right. So moving on to our next question, uh, and I think it's related to what we have talked about just now. A lot of universities and colleges offer psychology program. Right? What makes SEGI special? Okay, so what makes SEGI special is you have me, <laughs> first special team. Second is, uh -huh. um, is that we no longer offer assignments on a serious note. Yeah, we no longer offer assignments that is only written based. Mm. And uh, you know how we used to teach, we change the way we teach. So um, previously, we would just pick out a topic from the course and then design an uh, investigation or something like that. Ultimately, the students will be writing a report, mm. you know, uh, just by doing online research. Mm. So that is not good enough to be a competitive psychologist and to be well versed with the psychology field. So we have transformed the way we learn. We also transform the way students look at learning. Mm. So in my class, I can use my class as an example. I've created a field observation for my child's psychology class. Mm. So the students, they would write a proposal. All these are done by the students. Yeah? Mm. They write a proposal, they choose a child care or a child learning center. Mm -hmm. And then they... These are real life centers. Real, right. real. So they, uh, they create an observational checklist. So... In every course when we teach psychology, mm. I cannot stop emphasizing how important research skills are mm. in every subject. Mm. So what we do here is for a child psychology class, the students created an observational checklist, they mm -hmm. designed it themselves. Mm -hmm. You know, these are these are not easy things to be designed exactly. and to, to be constructed, you know. So they did the scoring metrics, they created uh, sub questions under social emotional well-being and physical development of the child so they had to apply everything that i've been teaching them mm. into the checklist yeah. to the observation conduct a real observation use the observational checklist to collect data they come back to the campus they process the raw data and then they create a report with statistical analysis mm. and they present it in the class wow so this is like an extensive yeah. way of studying psychology. Yeah, and I, and I think this really set us apart because when it comes to doing research, right, it's not just about going into the internet, read some journals, yes. and then, you know, write a critical review and things oh, like that. Oh, we're done about, with that. <laughs> yeah, we're done with that already. Yes, we're done. Now, it's, we are talking about, you have learned the theories. Yes. Now, let's look at real-life application. Let's do a real research. Find a real, uh, uh, find a real case scenario. Yes. Right, go in, do your research, present your data, yeah, and stuff like that is practical. Yeah, I like to add on to that. Usually, what sets SEGI uh, to answer your question, mm -hmm. what sets SEGI apart from most of the universities are usually students get hands on experience only when they're ready to do their practicum, mm. right? Mm. So, why wait for practicum? Why can't we use our classroom, our students, to start exposing them to uh, hands-on experiences every now and then so that they'll be really confident when it comes to their practicum? Exactly. And and I think it's very important for you to be confident, yes. especially in a professional field, because um, I think when it comes to practicum, right, the real goal shouldn't just be about going out there and get some real-life experience. Correct. I think that is, yes. we're done with that already. Yes. Practicum is an opportunity for you to impress your future employers. Yes. And for you to be able to do that, you have to be ready before the practicum. Yes. And that Correct. is what Segi is doing differently. Yes. We get you ready before your practicum so that when you go out into your practicum, you do well, you succeed, you impress your future employers, and then you get a job. Exactly. Right? It's not, you know, when, when it comes to your in, uh, practicum already, then you go out, you know, you try to pick yes. up the skills, it's too late. Yes. As an as a educator, right, when I asked feedback from my students after they completed this, this activity, they were very happy. Mm. You know, they were very happy. They said, wow, miss, this is amazing, you know, to, to be able to be there and to interact with the children and to see special needs children, children with disabilities, learning mm -hmm. disabilities and developmental disabilities in front of their own eyes and to be given that space to observe and to be with them changes their perspective about psychology that is very important yeah and it builds yes. on to the passion that yes they have. yes 
And from here, two things can happen. One, you can see whether you're truly interested in child psychology or not. Because mm -hmm. some of them, they want to pursue their career in child psychology mm -hmm. as a field, right? Yeah. If it suits you, you think you can withstand the environment and all that, this is a stepping stone for you to see whether you can be in the field or not. Exactly. And, and I think in a degree in psychology, it's also a, 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 an opportunity for you to explore different fields of psychology, exactly. see exactly. what you want. And then, you know, when you pursue your master's, you know which direction to go. Exactly. So another <coughs> thing that I like to add on here is in most universities, if you see their cost structure, mm. it's either too science-based or it's very... Uh, business based and it's very organizational based. What mm -hmm. we have done with Segi's uh, cost structure is we try to keep it with a good balance. Mm. We have the clinical, the criminology, the cyber psychology, we have industrial organizational courses. Mm -hmm. We also kept it with, uh, we also maintain some of the traditional subjects like cognitive, social psychology. Yeah. So yeah. it's very balanced. What we want from here is students to learn psychology, equip themselves with the right knowledge mm -hmm. and to know which direction to take yeah. upon graduation. Yeah. So they're not limited to clinical psychology. They're not limited to only uh, educational psychology, we're giving them a broad option that yeah. they can choose from. I think yeah. that is important because Very people change important. their mind and their career path exactly. easily, right? And people must have the opportunity to try. Yes. Especially when it comes to making a decision to your future career direction. Exactly. Right? Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Um, let's move on now and talk about traits of a successful psychologist. What do you think the traits are, you know, uh, to, to be successful as a psychologist and how is Sergi grooming our future success, uh, psychologists to be successful? Okay, so this is actually a very, very difficult question. It's very subjective. <laughs> yeah. It's very hypothetical at the same time. Mm. Okay, what I would tell my students, how do you prepare yourself? What do you need as a psychologist? One, the attitude mm. uh, with with knowing that you will be learning lifelong, there is no stop to learning. Like if you think that you just want to do a diploma or a degree, you want to stop and uh, you want to do something else with your life, that's okay. But in psychology, if you really want to be successful, subscribe to the lifelong learning. Mm. That is one thing, mm -hmm. right? Even for those mm -hmm. who have attained PhD, they're still learning. Yeah. They're still... It's an evolving field. Yes. Yeah. Right? So there's always something new. We are trying to keep up with the trend and... Time is evolving, you know, social media is taking over our lives and all that. So a lot of things will change in time, right? Things will never be the same five years from now. So the lifelong learning is truly what sets you apart from other people. Mm -hmm. Other than that is personal qualities like, I cannot emphasize enough on managing your own mental health. Mm. Right, you can't help other people when your mental health is at stake. Exactly. Right, and also to be able to understand and advocate mental health wherever you are. Mm. Don't just do it for the sake of learning. Uh, practice it. Practice psychology in daily life. Mm -hmm. Right, it's a field that you learn and you have to apply. Psychology is nothing without application. It's just theories. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Apply on on daily life. Mm. Apply it in your family. Apply it with your children apply the principles with your And we self. emphasize on application because yes. it's a very practical program. Yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So that's what I think is, is important. Other than that is the is the networking skills. Oh. Build, build relationship with people mm. and always be open to collaborate mm. and, and have that, that interest to talk to people and to get to know them and also have this entrepreneur mindset mm. how you can expand your business mm -hmm. and if you're a clinical psychologist you should want to think about how to have a good clientele that keeps coming back and referring people to you mm -hmm. and all that so the networking skills if you see it just as a discipline it's just a discipline if you see it as a business as an organization it grows and grows you know the potential is endless yeah and i think this is sort of like a blind spot for many uh psychology students who are pursuing psychology they see it as a subject they don't see it as a business but yes. when you go out into the world of psychology when you practice psychology then you will realize that um, your clients generally come from referrals yes right um, not only people refer clients to you 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 refer clients to other people as well and and i think that is what is missing in a lot of psychology programs, yes. that awareness that, hey, being a psychologist means you must be able to expand your network. Right. You must be able to uh, get to know more people. And that is how right. you grow as a psychologist. Yes. Yeah. So, so, so to sum up all this, right, how does Sergi, how does Sergi 
train our students to be lifelong learners? How do we train them to have a passion uh, you know, in psychology? How do we train them on networking skills and things like that? Okay. Um, the most important thing that we have been doing is we have really good academic curriculum advisors that's overseeing our program. That mm-hmm. is one thing. Another thing is we have industrial experts that is working really closely with us. Mm. So we are in partnership with industrial experts like uh, I can't name anybody here yeah. because of yeah. uh, data protection. Yep. And uh, we have clinical psychologists who own the centers and they're working with us. They're taking our students as interns and our students can work with them to see how they can one day be an established clinical psychologist mm-hmm. and this is how we are keeping things very relevant for the students because we're opening doors for them to see mm-hmm. how can you be like these people successful people mm-hmm. someday by getting them closer to the industrial people so we are mm-hmm. we are very hands-on we are also very closely connected to government bodies mm-hmm. and also industrial experts to always oversee our program and and guide our students right Thank you for sharing. And to our students, if you are interested in psychology, um, feel free to drop by Segi University and colleges, any one of our centers. And you know, if you want to speak to Miss Priscilla, drop a comment below and yes. say, "Hey, can I speak to Miss Priscilla about my studies?" You know, let's uh, come together and plan my next step. Uh, so I think to sum up from what Miss Priscilla have said, when it comes to psychology, there are a few very important points. Number one, uh, as she has said earlier, is the, the engagement with the industry is yes. very important, very right? True. When you visit a university or a college, ask them how closely are you working with the industry. And in Segi, we take uh, industry engagement very seriously. We do what we can to bring industry into the classroom. Yes. That is what we do very well. Secondly, is to uh, is to when you look at a psychology program, ask them how how do they teach you research skills? Yes. And research here is not just about going online, finding a few journals, being able to critically analyze the journal and things like that. It's about application. It's yes. about how you can take what you have learned and put it into practice. And this is what Segi is doing differently as well. And I think lastly is the whole idea of uh, subscribing to lifelong learning because yes. psychology is an ever evolving field. It's a growing field in Malaysia as well. And if you want to get into psychology, that mindset of lifelong learning is very important. And that is what SEGI is doing very, very differently. And that is what SEGI is, is emphasizing on as well. So thank you, Miss Priscilla, for joining okay. us in this session. And to all of our students, remember to keep in touch if you need help uh, in choosing, you know, in, 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 in planning your next step after SPM, after school. Uh, feel free to reach out to us. And this is what Chat with Segi series is all about. Also, you know, is to help you plan your next step. And with that, thank you once again, Miss Priscilla, for joining us. You're welcome. And to all of our viewers, thank you for joining us today. This will be our last session uh, for our Chat with Segi series today. Thank you. And we will see you tomorrow uh, for a few more sessions. Thank you and goodbye.